Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. We're doing the old school intro. It's really nice to be back and doing something else. So we have this game here that we're going to be making. It's going to be really fun. But I just want to let you guys know, please drop a like and just a comment if you like these videos. It really, really helps me out. It gives me a lot of motivation to come back. So go ahead and do that if you can. Otherwise, just enjoy the video and let me know what I can do better. We're going to be making a memory game which is going to be really cool. I'm going to show you a demo. It's really simple, but it includes a lot of C++ and a lot of SFML. It's a lot of code for such a simple game. Hopefully it's enough. This is a lot bigger than the last video. And it's a fun little project, so which you can build on later as well. So hope you enjoy it. I'll see you in the video. Now, like always, if you want to follow this series, you're going to have to link SFML. So to do that, you're going to have to go to my SFML linking video. So it shows you how to do it for Visual Studio 2022 on Windows. If you want to follow this series on any other system, you're going to have to find out how to link it on your own. I'm sorry, I'm not really good at any other system. So for Windows, at least you have it right here. It's a very quick and simple video. So just go ahead and watch that. And the code itself will be on my GitHub. So a lot of people have a hard time finding the GitHub link because it changed. You're going to have to go to this link right here and then find not this simple games. This is the old one. There's a new repository. So just go ahead, go to repositories and you'll find the simple apps and games. And right here, you'll find everything you need in the main branch. So the way it's set up, I'll just go through it again, is that any linking stuff will be in the external folder and all the code will be here. So every game we make will have its own folder. You're going to have to go in there and drag all of this out to the main source folder. So first things first, you're going to have to download the code here and Make sure you have Visual Studio installed and then just drag the code from the game that you want into the source folder and remove any other source folder files or source files that you find there. You don't have to remove any of this, but just go ahead and do that. But whenever I push this repository, I'll make sure to clean it up so you don't have to remove anything. But if I mess up sometime, you know what it is. Or if you've had this repository on your system for a while and there are other files here, you're just going to have to switch those out. So go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to show you a nice little demo of what we're going to be building. So this game is just like any brain game, memory game, where stuff will pop up and you'll have to do the same. You have to push in the same squares that were lit up. So it just looks like this. And you saw those little things pop up. That's the sequence we want to want to click in. So I can click in any other sequence and it will tell me on the left here. I'm going to remove this right here. You'll see on the left, it said incorrect because I did it incorrectly and it says zero out of one. Now we haven't added any text to this, so it's just going to be text free. It's just going to use the console to tell you what's going on. We'll get into more complicated stuff with text later, but for this one, we're just going to go simple. Now, if I, if I push in a wrong one and then I'll see a new sequence here. So I think it was this, 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 and this, and then it said correct. So I had one out of two correct and it flashes kind of quickly. So you're going to have to, you're going to have to see what's going on. And to close it, you just close it like that. So a very simple game, it seems like, but there is a lot of code just to get that animation and everything working. So anything you do with C++ raw like this will take a lot of code to achieve something small. So that's just what we have to get used to and accept, but it's going to be fun. So let's get started and create the Visual Studio project. So let's start off by creating the project. Just go ahead and do a create a new project and make an empty project and call this whatever you want and just hit create and then you'll have a new project and you can go ahead and create a main file here main.cpp just make a default main here just like that so once you have this you have your project created and you can go ahead and follow the linking video that i showed you in the beginning and just link sfml and when we run this later make sure it's at x86 because we'll be linking for 32 bit you don't have to understand all of it i explain it a little better in the video but just go ahead and make sure it's x86 and release or debug i just run whatever you want here so since I already have a project for this on my GitHub, I'm just going to use that and I'm going to add my new main and everything is linked here for me. So I'm just going to add that main and just do whatever you did earlier. And I'm just going to run this little test to see that everything is linked correctly. Everything's fine. Yeah, and it runs and it says test. Great. Now to create our game, the core thing in this game is a tile. So a tile would be whatever little square we have, which can switch colors from green to red. And it will show you which one you should remember and which one you should press. So those tiles are going to be quite key and they're kind of like a button where you can hover on them and you can click them, but we're not going to be using textures here. We're going to be using 
basic colors. So it's going to be quite easy. It's a different way to do it, but let's go ahead and create that class real quick. Just go ahead and add a class, right click and just call it tile .h. Just leave it like that. Click OK. And we have our little class. So you got your CPP file and your H file, but we're going to start with the H file and we're going to go ahead and flesh this out just so we can see how this class is going to look. So the things this class is going to need, of course, is a shape. Now, if I were to try to add a rectangle shape, it's not going to work, right? So what we have to do first is to include a few things. So I'm going to include SFML graphics and SFML system.hpp, and this will pop up. So I'll just call this shape. Now, when we press a button or we, we show the button, we want to know if it's going to be an active or an inactive button. Now, I don't know if that's the best name for this, but it will basically show you which one you should remember and which ones are just dead buttons or dead tiles. For those, I just need two colors. So I'm going to add a color, color inactive and SF color active. And we'll just have to make do with that. And hopefully we'll, we'll learn to use those names. It should be color active. Now we need to fix the functionality to hover on a button. And instead of using textures like we did in another video where we had hover textures and, and press textures and, and idle textures, we're going to use the alpha value of our color to display how bright it should be. So if you guys don't know what the alpha value is, it's basically the fourth value. You have red, green, and blue, and then you have alpha, and that's the transparency value. So the more alpha you have, the less transparency, uh, transparency there is. So max at 255 in SFML, if you were to bring it down to 50, it will be really transparent. And in this case, we have a black background on our window. So the transparency won't really show. It will just become dimmer and brighter the more we increase or decrease the alpha value. Three alpha values would be U int 8. Since if we look at our color, it's basically four pieces of the U int 8. Let's create these U int 8 alpha idle. Duplicate that three times, and we're just going to change the ending here. So hover and press and a few booleans to check if the button is an active button or a tile is an active tile. It's one that you should remember. And then we need a boolean to check if it's pressed, just like the button we did before. Now the time to add a few private and public things. And I'm sorry, this private should be up here. Any private functions will be down here and we have our public section. I'm just going to fix clean this up a little bit. And firstly, I'm going to do a tile and a tile destructor. But in our case, we want to create a tile at a certain position with a few values set to it. So I'm going to create a another constructor, which will help us with that. So SF vector 2F position, a size to it. And if this one should be an active tile, I keep wanting to say button. I don't know why, but that should be it for our constructors and destructors. Now comes our functions. Now, a few of these functions I'm going to define here as inline because I don't like to make the CPP file that big, especially for these small functions. So firstly, I'm going to create a function for const bool is pressed. And this is just going to return is pressed. Very simple. Sorry, pressed is what it should be. So this is a very simple function. It's just going to return if this tile has been clicked. Now to a few setters. So in line void set active const bool active. This active equals active. This will allow us to just switch the active state on these. And whenever we click a button, it could be set to active and that will turn the color green or something like that. So we'll just go on this. Everything will make sense in the end. I'm going to make another inline inline void set color inactive. This shape dot set fill color to this color inactive. And here we could make just one function, which would say set color. And then we could pass in the color here. But you know, I, I find this easier since we're saving the color inside the class. So we can just we can just keep it within the class. We don't have to send anything in from outside. Set color active. This color active. Great. Now we have a few ways to manipulate this tile. And I'm actually going to add const here as well because this doesn't change anything. Now to actually get the active state, and it should be up here inline const bool is active. We'll just say is active is good const return this active. Now two very crucial functions are going to be void update and void render. Now the update function is basically going to check if the button has been pressed and it's going to set a few of these flags on it for us. So to check, we're going to just 
create a SF vector 2F mouse pos view is what we're going to call it. And we're going to make this a reference. And then we're going to make a const bool LMB press. Great. And to render, all we need is a SF render target reference target. Don't forget the references here, guys. It's really important. And with that, our tile class is structured. And now we're going to have to just flesh this out and it's going to be a functioning tile. All right. So now we're just going to define all of our functions. So what I did was I control dot clicked and I created definition for all of these. So you have that in tile.cpp just to save you some time. And they're looking good. They're looking fresh. You don't really need the destruct or whatever. I like to keep it. Now in the tile constructor, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and set default values for everything. Alpha, idle, hover, and pressed. So just default values for all our, uh, whoops, all of our things that we can, we can have except for shape and color because they have their own default constructors. Uh, we don't have an issue here. So once you do this, we're just going to copy that. Boom. Easy peasy. But now what we're going to do is we're going to set up this shape, for example, because we have a few different things here. We have size, we have position and colors and so on. So, um, but firstly, I'm going to set this to active before I forget, because that's something we're getting from outside. Press stays false because we haven't pressed anything yet. Okay. Sorry. Uh, this shape dot set position. Let's start with set size. You know what? Set size SF, or we can just say SF vector to F size size. Great. This shape dot set color fill color. Now we haven't set the colors yet, so we'll have to do that before all of this. So this color active equals SF color red. No green. I think we had green in the demo. Yeah. And then we'll set this color inactive to red. Now I'm going to set this fill color to this color inactive since we want everything to be inactive from start. Now we're going to set the position of the shape. So shape dot set position position like that. And just to help to see these shapes, we need an outline. So set outline thickness. I'm going to set it to 2F. You can set it to whatever you want. Remember this program or this game, you can do whatever you want with it. Of course you can. So set outline color, set outline color, SF color white. I like that. It works for me. So I'm going to run with that. Now we have a few different things. Firstly, I just want to set these correctly. So when we are pressing something, we want it to be really dark. So I'm going to set that to 50. If it's idling, I'm going to set it to 100. And if we hover on something, we want it to have its maximum brightness, right? Maximum visibility. So two, five. And I like these. These are good. Now, not F here. I'm going to remove that since it's a uint. Don't do the F. Sorry about that. Remember, remove the F. Good. It's a uint. Otherwise, it's going to complain or give us a warning. I don't know why I did that. Good. So this looks clean. Now we're going to go into the meat of things. So the update function is basically going to check, has the mouse been clicked on one of these tiles? If so, set the color and the active whatever to the top. And the render, what it's going to do is just to draw the shape out. So we can just do this first. Target dot draw this shape. That's all you got to do. Boom. Done. But for the update function, it's going to be a little more complex. Firstly, what we're going to do is we're going to reset the pressed Boolean. So since we're pressing the button a lot, we just whenever we're checking for a press, we want to set it to false first, and then we'll check if the mouse was clicked within that tile, and then we'll set it to for the next frame, and then we'll come back here and we'll set it. To, so that's how it's going to go in circles. If we always keep it to true, we'll never know if we're clicking or not. It will always be true or false. So that's why you have to reset it here. So let's check if the mouse is within the bounds. So if this shape dot get global bounds dot contains mouse post view, then we're going to do a bunch of things. <clears throat> so this basically means that we're hovering, right? And we have an else here, which will tell us if we're idle. So when the button is idle, what do we want to do? Well, we want to set the color. So this shape dot set fill color to this color. Oh, sorry. Is this not how it works? What, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do a custom color here since we're changing one variable of the whole color. So it's, it will be the alpha. So what we want to do is we'll just tell it to since since the colors of active and inactive will be set outside in the game board whenever we're playing that will set these colors, not this. This will only set the alpha value of whatever color the, the tile has at this moment. So we don't want to change that. So what we want to do is we want to do this shape dot get fill color to make this a little easier. We can do this SF color const do a const. We'll call it SC for shape color. 
this shape dot get fill color. So this will make it a little easier to read, even though we have to create a new variable each time we do this, but it will help us out a little bit. So instead of doing this whole thing, what we'll do is in here, we'll say sf.r or sc, sorry, dot r, sc.g, sc.b, right? So that's the blue RGB. And then we have our alpha. So this alpha idle. And this way we save whatever color the shape has at this moment, but we set the alpha value of whatever is happening. So if we're hovering or not, and I'll just copy this whole thing here. And instead of alpha idle, I'll say alpha hover. Good, great. Now all we need to do is just to check if LMB pressed, that means there is a mouse click. So this is a mouse click. And if we clicked on the tile, of course we want the shape or the fill color to be alpha pressed. But one more thing we have to do here is we have to say this pressed equals true so that we can get that later from the H file inline function get pressed or is pressed. So this will return if the button is actually pressed. That way we can check if the tile has been pressed or not outside of this class. There you go. That is the tile and really nice. Now the next thing we're going to do is to start working on the game board itself. So the game board itself is a little more complicated but it's really easy to create as before. We'll just say game board just to create a class and just start that off. And we'll do the same thing. I like to flesh them out first so that you see what's going to happen and what's going to be what. And then we'll start fleshing them out in here. So we'll we'll just declare them here like we always do. So I'll do a private and a public. And we're going to need a bunch of includes here. Firstly, we're going to include tile. So just pay attention to the includes because we're going to need a few things here. And then we want to include... <coughs> a vector, of course, because we're going to be using that. We're going to include IO stream. Now, before we move on, I'm going to remove IO stream from main so we don't have it here anymore. And I'm going to include game board.h. So don't forget to do this. This is really important. Just make sure that you did this. I'm going to close tile for now. So game board.h and you include all the stuff here and you include game board.h in main. Once you've done that, let's keep going here. Include time.h because we're going to do some randomizations include windows.h and include algorithm now i have this in my notes i'm not sure if we're going to need this but let's see algorithm there we go this is something we're going to need because we're going to sort some stuff out and sort a few vectors so that's why we're going to need this now once you've done this we're going to start adding all of our variables that we're going to need so firstly we're going to need a sf render window window and this should be a pointer. So remember, make sure that this is a pointer. Very important. So you don't copy the window or do something weird. So remember to have a pointer. I'll just note that every time I come across this, just make sure it's a pointer. We're going to need a vector for our tiles. So we're just going to say tile pointer tile tiles vec tile vec. I'll call it tiles vector, whatever. We'll, we'll say you, you name it, whatever you want. So we're going to need another vector. And this is going to be later when we're randomizing the board and making it so so we can save the correct sequence or the correct tiles so that we can match that up to whatever we're inputting. So we're going to need two vectors for that, whatever we're inputting and whatever is saved. And for that, we're going to save integers. So the indexes or indices to these tiles. So we're going to call it active tiles vec. That will be the saved tiles that are the correct tiles to click on. And then we're going to do an int for selected tiles. Or we'll call it selection vec, actually. Perfect. A few more things here. We're going to need a float key time and a key time max. And these, this is kind of a classic thing. Whenever you're clicking on a button, it will just bam the hell out of that button. So you need something to pause that. And key time helps us with that. It's going to make sure we can't click on a button more than whatever and with a, with a timer in between. So you click it once and then the timer will start and you click it again and so on. So it's not spamming as fast as the frames can go. That's really important to remember. Otherwise you can't make games like these. So we'll have key time here. And then we need to have a SF vector vector to F mouse post view just to save the mouse position within the class in a class member and update it. So we don't have to recreate this variable constantly. Usually you would create this in the update function, but it's nicer to have it like this so we don't have to create a vector to every loop. Then we want a tile size for the game. Tile size. We want a way to exit the game. So bool exit game. And we want to count for how many tiles we have selected already. So that will be tiles selected. And then 
number of active tiles will help us keep track of how many active tiles we want in the game. If you want to make it super hard, you might have 10 active tiles. So it will show 10 random tiles you have to click on. That's what this is going to control a little bit. And we want to save it so we can have it for our vectors. And then when we animate, we want a way to check when the animation should end and when it should start. So I'll have a variable, a Boolean for that actually, restarting to tell us when the game is restarting and it's animating. And when that's done, we can start our input. And then the animation time, I had a hard time finding a name for this, but I'll just call the timer display timer. So how long we're displaying the whole animation. So just call it display timer. If you have better names for this, go ahead and, and add those. But I'll, I'll go with this. And the number of correct choices and the number of incorrect choices. There we go. So a bunch of variables. Sorry, we want to indent these like this. Hold on. Like that. Clean. Good. Now to all the functions of this whole beautiful class. So now we're going to have to add a bunch of functions because this is the main game class. So this is going to take care of everything basically. So if you thought this was a lot, well, we're going to get into it now. The beefy parts of this. First, I'm going to add a void create board since we want to create the board. And this is going to be done with a few arguments here. And we can select a board width and a board height. I'll set these to const as well, these parameters. So these are going to allow us to create a board we want with a certain size. And the window will also be sized depending on how many of these that we select. And once we create a board, we want to randomize board. We want to animate the board using a function. So this will allow us to show the animation in the beginning that you saw in the demo. And then we want a way to check if we have selected the correct tiles that were shown in the first flash. So that will check for us and it will return either true or false, depending on well, whatever we did there. And these are all supposed to be private functions. So I'm going to put them under the private section. And then we have a few update ones. So update key time and then void update board. So these two are also private functions because we don't need to have them public. They don't have to be accessed from outside. And we have two more inline ones actually that I want to want to create. So inline const bool check key time const. And what this will do, it will return this key time is greater or equal than this key time max. So you'll see how this will work later. It will just check for us if this has reached its destination, basically. So it's target value. If it's not, then we won't be able to click. So this will be our timer for the button clicks. They want an inline const bool. Sorry, inline void reset key time. This key time equals 0.f. So we could just type this out, but it's nice to use a function to do it because it, it helps us a little bit in readability. So just clean this up a little bit. And then we'll create our first public inline here. And that will be a inline void. Sorry, wrong again. Inline const bool. I just have to remember that. We, we want to check if we it's free to exit the game. If we're okay to exit the game, then it will... We will just return this exit game, that Boolean. So whenever we set this to true, it will be shown through this function. And we want it to be public because we want to access it later in the main function when we do our uh, window and event loop here. So it will help us exit the game. Our game loop will be outside in the main. So now to the meat of it. So game board, we want to create the, the constructor here. And that will be created using a SF render window pointer window and then the size of each tile tile size and I'm going to give these a default because maybe we don't want to specify that each time but if we want we could but I'm still going to give it a default it's good to good to try this out so I like 100f and this is going to be both for the height and the width so it's perfect and then int board width 5 int board height 5 and then let's minimize that a little bit and do int number active is what I call an active equals four. It's pretty good. So what this means is we'll have four tiles that will be flashing green and a board size of five times five. So that's 25 tiles and each tile will be this size. So this way we can control how the game board looks and in turn how the window will look. I'm just going to add the game board destructor like this. So what we have left to do for game board dot H would be a function called restart, which will allow us to restart 
the game. So we'll play up the animation and we'll fix all the variables we need to restart to start the next round. So it will just be an endless loop of uh, more and more of these random sequences that you have to click in. So restart is great. Then we're going to need a update and a render function. So update. And this update function is going to contain the window. So the reason we need that is just because, well, we'll see. It's about the mouse positioning and the uh, the converting that into a view space and all that. So we'll get into that once we get there. But just know that it's needed here. So SF render window reference window. And then we will actually copy this and I'll call this render and change this from render window to render target target. Great. And the reason we do target here is like I've said in the other videos, um, but if this is the first one you're watching, the reason we do target is because a window is a render target. So it, it inherits from render target. This is like more of a base class. So there are different types of things you can render to, including windows. So this, this doesn't lock us to a window. We can render to another type of it, which we might see later down the down the road. But just know that there are different types and that this doesn't this is a good habit to have when you're rendering. So that's good. Now we have all the stuff ready. All we have to do now is to define these. I'm just going to go ahead and create definitions for these empty ones and then we'll go through those one by one. So now that I've created definitions for all of these, albeit empty ones, but we'll get started with these one by one and all we don't have here is just a default game board constructor. And it's a question if we need that or not. But sometimes it's a good habit to have a default constructor just so you can initialize stuff by default. So I'm going to create one of those, just an empty constructor. And I'm going to define this one as well, just since I forgot that. And we'll just use this to initialize all the variables to their default values. But this is the one we're going to be using primarily. So let's get started with these. Now, some of these are easier to define than others, but I think we'll just start from the top in the right orders. So let's start off by creating the board. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to start creating a few local variables that will help us out. So we're, we'll have an X and an Y, and I'm just going to set these to 0.f. And these will help with the positioning of the tiles. Since we're going to have a 2D vector of tiles, sometimes you need a few extra variables to make them into a grid like a rectangle or a, a square. So we're going to have to move them down depending on the index they, that we're iterating through. So after five, we might want to move down a notch and then draw five horizontally and then move down, draw five, move down, draw five. So it will all make sense once we get this going. But just know that we need these. Now we're going to make a 2D or a staggered for loop, basically. So the first one will go through board height and then we'll just copy this one. We'll make a new one actually. We'll do four. And then instead of I, we'll set K and it should update it automatically. Nice. Thank you, Visual Studio. And then we'll say board width. So now we know that we're iterating through right or left to right and then top to down. And now what we're going to do is to create the tile itself in this tiles vec dot pushback. And since they are pointers to tile, we're, we're going to have to create a new tile like this and just give it all the stuff that we need. So what did we need again? We needed a position, a size, and if it's active or not. So the position itself is going to be a SF vector 2F, and then we'll say X and Y. And after that, we need the size. So I'm just going to say this tile size, since we're going to set that later in the constructor. And we'll set this to false just to start off with. So this is kind of a default tile that we're creating. And once we get to randomize board, this is where we'll set which ones will be active and which ones will not. So but for now, this is fine. And X, Y will be zero first. So the first tile will be set at zero. And then we need to increase this. So X plus equals this tile size. And in the first for loop at the end of that one, we need to set Y plus equals this tile size. But here we also need to reset the X. So if you just imagine the tiles being rendered from left to right, X is going up, boom, 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 boom. And then we get to a point where we want, or we've gone through the board width. So say that's five. So after five tiles, it's going to get to the end. And then we're going to get out here and iterate the next one in the top for loop. And that's going to increase the Y by one. So we're going to go down a notch 
and X is going to be at zero instead of at the, the right. So it's going to go back here and it's going to go down a notch. And then we're going to do the same thing over again, five, and then it's going to go down five and go down five. So this is just going to do that. It's really simple. You'll see that once we get it rolling, but hopefully you got an image of how that works. I'm not the best one at explaining, so I'm sorry about that, but let's just go ahead and, and continue. So randomized board is a little bit of a beefy one as well. So this one is going to have to take care of a few things. It's going to have to reset a few things and it's going to have to go in stages. I'm going to try to explain the stages as well as I can. So the first step is to take the active tiles vec and just clear that. This is because this vector contains all the randomized tiles that we are supposed to click on from the current game. So when you go on to the next game and you randomize it, you want a whole new type of or a whole new set of active tiles. So First you clear it and then we're going to fill it up with new ones. That's going to go each iteration. Each time you play, it's going to be new sequence of tiles you have to click. And then we're going to go through each tile in tiles vec and set it to set. Sorry, this tiles vec at position I set active false. And this or I could have just done a control D on that one and set color inactive and remove the Boolean in here. Good. So what we're doing is we're resetting all of the tiles here. First, we're removing the active tiles and we're resetting all the tiles on the board. So everything will be red now, you can imagine. So nothing, nothing is going to be set to active. And now we're going to randomize the board a little bit. So this, this is a way I did it. You can do it probably in a much better way. What I do is I save all the indices from this. Say that this is 10 long. This, then this will contain everything from zero to nine. And then we're going to use that to randomize what indices are going to be active or not. So depending on the number of active tiles I've set in my game board from out here, number of active. So in this case, four by default, this is going to randomize out four values from the index vector. And those four indices are going to be the active ones, the ones we're going to click on or supposed to be clicking. On. And this just guarantees that we won't randomize the same number to and we'll remove any number picked from this one. So you can't pick that again. I hope that makes sense. Again, hopefully it will make more sense in action. So here also we're going to just go through the entire tiles vec and we're going to just add the I, the index to this vector, just so we save all of the indices. Once we've done that, we can start to add stuff. So we're going to keep track of how many tiles we've added and we're going to keep track of the index that we're at. And we're going to loop. So we're going to loop while tiles added is not equals this tiles or number of active tiles. This just means that we want to make sure that we loop through until we get to this number. So if we have four, we want to make sure that tiles added is four. And of course, we need to do tiles added plus plus in here, but that will be at the bottom. So let's start off here. So we're going to randomize the index. Now, this is really important. We need to, of course, we need to randomize it. Otherwise, it's not going to be fun. So I'm going to just go ahead and randomize it and I'm going to give it index vector dot size. So it will be anything between zero and whatever this size is. And now we're going to use that index, which is at this position to activate the tile. So this, sorry, this active active tiles vec, we're going to push back this index that we just got and we're not going to push back the index, we're going to push back the index from in the index vector. So maybe this doesn't make sense yet. I know it's a little complicated. Basically, we're just picking one of the numbers in this vector to be which contains all the indices from this vector and putting that as an active. So let's just go ahead and do this first and then we'll try to see it in action. And we're going to actually activate the tile as well. Index vector at position index is active true or set active true, set color active. Now we have added the tile and we have saved the active tile index. All we need to do now is to remove the index from the index vector. So we can't pick that again. Remember we're looping here. So once it chooses a vector index from the vector, it has to remove that. So we can't pick that again. So the way to do that is to say index vector dot erase index vector dot begin. You need to use the iterator here, begin plus index. And that's that. Now we'll make sure it erases that index. So we can't pick that again. There we go. That function was a little beefy, but it's done. But that's not the end of the beefy functions. There are plenty more here. So display order is also a big one. Um, this is going to animate the first part of the game. It's 
going to show us the, the empty board and then flash the green ones, the active ones, and then it's going to give the empty board again and then allow us to pick. And this all depends on a timer that we created called this display timer. And it's not going to be very clean. There are going to be hard coded values here. I really don't like those, but just going with the theme of these quick and simple games, we're not going to go too in depth and do everything perfectly. If you want to do that, please do that on your own. Just try to fix this and make it clean. What you're going to see here is just a nice, simple, basic foundation maybe that you can build upon. So that's more of the theme of these, these uh, tutorials here. But let's just get started. First thing is going to be a show board. So this is just showing the empty board. And to do this, we need to reset all of the tiles and that we're going to do in a for loop. So this tiles vec dot size, this tiles vec at position I set color inactive. So just totally resetting everything. And this is going to have to be done in an if statement. Now this is where the timer comes in. Display timer. So that's less than 50.f. All right. And we're just going to copy that in there. So basically this is saying if the display timer is anywhere between this, we'll just keep showing the empty board. Nothing else will be done. Now let's make an else if, and this is going to go in a different range here. So we're going to say display timer greater or equal to 50.f and it's going to copy paste that less than 100.f. So another 50, what do you, whatever you want to call it, 50 <laughs> float, float timers. And here we're just going to copy this for loop again. But now what we're going to do is we're going to check if it is an active tile, we're just going to sh show it, just flash it a little bit. So set color active, but, but if this vector at this position is active, so if it's internally set to active, we're going to show the color active because remember all we're doing here is just setting the color. We're not actually internally saying that this is an inactive tile. We're just showing it as inactive. So the player won't know that it is an active tile. But here we'll actually flash the active one so you can just have a chance to remember those. And this timer here is what is the time that you're going to be able to see these tiles. And the final thing we want to do, or almost the final thing, is in another else if, and I'll copy this part from this one and just increase the number to 100 and 150. Whoops, got a squiggly in there. Okay. And what we're going to do now is just to show the empty board again. So just set everything to inactive. Just copy paste this one back here. And then we just reset everything again. And the final part in this function is the else. So this just sets this restarting to false, meaning that we've, we're done restarting. All the timers are done. And at the end, we'll say this display timer plus equals one dot F. So if you want to change this, don't have to do plus plus here. You can do any other number if you think it's going too slow or whatever. So you can switch around with these timers any way you like. Just play around with them. Try to make a cleaner solution to this. This was the fastest thing I could come up with. Maybe not the best, but hey, it did work. So we'll just roll with that right now. Now we're at check selection and check selection lets us just check if whatever we clicked really is equal to the correct number of active tiles. So the correct indices. And to do that, we need to sort both our vectors so that they go in the same order because we're not checking sequence here. We, the, we don't care which order we're clicking everything as long as they are the same numbers, the same tiles. So if we sort both of our vectors, the one we clicked and the one that's actually in the background, we'll have the same sequence no matter what. That's why we need to sort those two. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So we have one way to do that is sort, std sort. And this comes from the algorithm include. And the first thing we're going to sort is this active tiles vec dot begin this active tiles vec dot end. So this will just sort it for us. And then I'll copy that and use selection vec instead. So now we've sorted both of our vectors. And all we have to do now is to say if it's equal to this selection vec. Perfect. This will just give us what we need. Nothing too complicated. I think hopefully you understood that. And all we're going to do in here is just make an if statement. If this key time is less than this key time max, this key time plus equals one dot F. And this is also something you can change. That's why I'm doing plus equals. So you can change how fast this, this goes, depending on your computer and how you're working. Now we're going to lock this to 60 FPS. No matter where we are, we should have the same speed unless you're on a literal Game Boy or something, and, and this is trying to get this to run, then you're going to have like two FPS. But you know, <laughs> if you're not, if you're on a computer, you should be able to hit 60 on this. Otherwise you got some serious issues, but let's start off with uh, updating the board here. 
So this is super beefy, but let's get started. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if this is restarting. So if the game is restarting, we're going to display the order. Now remember the function we created, we're going to actually use that now. Else we're going to do all of the logic that has to do with clicking on a tile, selecting it and checking if it's correct or whatever. So firstly, we're going to animate. Otherwise, we're going to do this. So if tiles, this tiles selected is less than this number of active tiles, let's loop through this tiles vec side and let's get to clicking. So this tiles vec at position I. Now let's call the update function here and we're asked to give the mouse position. So we will be saving the mouse position. We haven't calculated that yet because that's coming further down in the update function. But let's just assume that it's being calculated here. So we'll just pass that in and that's a reference. So we just have to pass in like this. And then we need to check if the mouse button is pressed, the left mouse button. So we can use the SF mouse is button press function here. SF mouse left. There we go. And we'll just that will just update it. So this will up, keep updating if we're hovering or doing whatever it will. It will change the look of the tile so we know what's happening. It's more for the user, actually. So it's, it's pretty nice. And now we're going to actually check the press. So if this tiles vec at position I is pressed, which will be updated in here and this check key time so that we don't spam the button, then we'll do anything that has to do with the press of the button. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add it to the selection vec and tell it that we actually chose this and we'll just push back the index of it because this keeps the index of which tile we clicked. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to say that this tile vec at position I set color active. So we'll just set the color to active. Even if it's wrong, we just have to show the player which one they click. This tiles selected also needs to be incremented. So we have added one to the tile selected. It's a good idea to increase that, which will control this if statement. So once we're above that, we should be good. It will stop checking this. And then we'll just do reset key time just so we can start clicking again. Now we have to pick the correct if statement. So it's this one. It needs an else statement. And here we'll print out the result of our selection. So once we've selected, completed everything, we'll see the result. And this will just be printed out to the console like I showed you earlier, but it should be enough for now. And firstly, we're going to check if it was a correct selection, check selection. So if this is true, if it went well, then we're going to print out correct, see out correct like that. And then we're going to increment the correct right there. Make an else statement, just copy paste this in here and we'll say incorrect if it well, well, if this return false, it should be incorrect, right? So incorrect, incorrect like this. And then we're going to create a simple final STDC out here and it will say correct, incorrect. So it will show us the values that we have or, or the ratio of correct to incorrect here, basically. This correct, this incorrect. Great. And then we'll just restart everything. Cool. And that is yet to be written. But every time we end the game, we see, or not end the game, end the iteration, we'll see a result and then it will restart the next iteration. So now let's get to initializing some stuff. We'll start with this window equals null pointer. This is just going to give us just null, uh, nullify everything basic so that if anything goes wrong, we'll know that if this stuff is null, we'll know that this one was called and not this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly set everything to defaults here and just speed through it. So I just reset everything and this is basically how it will look, but this is going to make it a little easier for us since I'm just going to copy paste this into game board and we can start to set these correctly. I remove window because I'm going to use the initializer list here. So window will just get the value of window and that's that. Tile size will get the value of tile size. Exit game is false. Key time max, you can set to what you want. But I have it at 10F, so that helps. Whereas I think that's enough to, to limit the clicks. It depends on if you're on a laptop or not. I've, I've noticed if I play this on a laptop, it's a little more clicky, so you can increase this. But it's, it's pretty responsive. And this key time will be, it should be zero, or it can be this key time max, actually. So we'll start it at the maximum value. Number of active tiles will be number active. Tile selected zero. Restarting should be true, since we'll start by restarting the game and the rest should be zero. And in the constructor, we're going to call two functions. Firstly, we're going to create the board with board width and oh, whoops, 
make sure to get the correct ones here in case you have a not a a not the same width as height basically so you create the board and then we will randomize the board randomize board cool now the constructor is complete and should create a nice game board for us now we're almost nearing the end we just have a few more of these that we need to do and restart will just reset all the variables we need to reset and restart the game for us so this is a very important function so let's go ahead and create that this will set this tiles selected to zero this restarting equals true this is very important this display timer equals zero selection vec dot clear just to clear out anything we've selected and then re-randomize the board for us so we don't have to create the board again we just have to randomize it again since the board is already created all the tiles are there we just need to randomize it and set the active tiles to something else and that should be that for the restart for the update the mouse position is very important now the mouse position window we could create a vector 2 here but that's why we have it as a member variable so we don't have to recreate this each frame and now we can just use this member variable and just keep updating it with what we want and what we're going to do is we're going to say window whoops window dot map pixel to chords sf mouse get position window so if you don't know what this does it it's a little complicated but it gets the window position of the mouse relative to the window basically if you remove this it will get the position relative to the screen so this at least limits it to the window but there's something called a viewport within the window and map pixel to chords will find the correct mouse position within that viewport and in our case we're not moving the viewport or the camera or whatever you want to call it but in some cases you might so it's always a good habit to do it like this and also this gives us a float back to what we want so we want a float we don't want a vector to i which this gives back which is a uh, integer vector so we're losing a lot of, of data there so we just want the float version which this one gives us so make sure you do that right and now we're just going to call update key time very simple and this update board so super satisfying we've done all the hard labor up top we're just calling on the stuff here now and render is also very easy so we'll loop through this tiles vec dot size and we'll say tiles vec at position i render to window sorry target is what we want to render to so whatever target we give here in main it will render for us our main game loop is going to be in main so that's why we're doing this way we could have had it in here but i'll do it this way for us this time and and you can select you can do whatever you want to do basically but i thought this was the cleanest way to do it right now so now the game board class is done and it's time for the final stretch working on main and in main all we have to do is include game board h and we're going to create a few constants here const int board width equals to five and i'm going to duplicate this four times board height five active tiles four and a float value called tile size and say 100.f really good and now we're gonna initialize the random so the way we do that we just do srand times zero since we're using a random function within our game board we need to initialize that before we use it and that will be done here because we'll be calling the game board update further down here now let's create a render window so render window of course we need a window to draw everything we'll just call this window and sf video mode to set the size and the title would be memory game but the video mode will be dependent on the board width and height that's why i defined these here because it will make our board and window exactly the same so firstly we'll say board width multiplied by int tile size so that's the width and then i'll copy this and instead of width we'll say height and don't forget to set these to int you could do a static cast as well if you want but I'm just casting it like this for now. And that looks good. So now we'll have a correct, correctly sized window. And what, of course, what I want to do is don't forget to do this. Otherwise, we'll have different experiences when running the game. So set frame rate limit to 60. Let's go ahead and do that. That means all our speeds and timers will run at the same speed. Let us also initialize the game board. And let's see what the constructor says. It wants the window. So I'm going to give it the window address the address to the window and then we're gonna say board width i think was the one no tile size was after that so tile size tile size board width board height and 
active tiles. Great. And now to the main loop. So while the window is open and game board dot check exit is not true, we'll do our main loop. And at the end here, just for cleanup, we'll close the window in case something happens and we, we jump out of the loop and nothing happens. So we'll just close the window here. But the only way to actually exit the game is to close the window. So we'll be doing that anyway. But I'll just add that as a reference here. Now, one thing I just want to mention before we move on with main is I forgot something. We're actually allocating memory here and we're never removing that. So I just saw that. I just wanted to make sure I do this before we just end the video. So go ahead to your destructor in game board, find the destructor and just paste this for loop. And let's say this tiles vec dot size. And so let's set I here and then remove basically everything here and just say delete this tiles vec. This is the only place where we're allocating memory in which we need to clear. So make sure you do this so you don't forget it. Otherwise, it's just bad practice. So don't don't forget that. But now we can go back to main and the while loop. Let's do the whole event thing first. So event event while window dot poll event event. And let's see if the window button is pressed, because if you don't have this and you try to close the SFML window by clicking on the X, it's not going to work. You just have to you still have to pull the event and make sure it, to check if it's clicked so that you can close it because you can do other things with that button. You don't have to close the window if that button is it's just a button. So you actually have to code in the functionality here. So to check that we want event dot type equals SF event closed window dot close. So if the closed button is pressed and the event type returns that we'll close the window for real. It's really good. Now we want to update the game board and it wants the window reference. So I'm just going to give it the window. Now we're just going to render. So window dot clear game board dot render to window and window dot display. And voila, here we go. We have a main function. We have all kinds of tiles and all the game board, and everything in place. Now is the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and check it out. And it works just as expected. So we saw those. I'm just going to click an incorrect. So incorrect zero out of one. I didn't see that one either. I'm going to see if I see this one now. So I think it's this, this, this and this. And there we go. Correct. I don't I didn't see that one. Was it an L? Yeah, correct. OK, let's keep seeing that playing that boom, boom, boom. Good. So it's working. This is exactly what we wanted. No issues. You just have to wait a bit after the animation and you're good. Now, if we try to increase this to maybe seven, seven, and we set the active tiles to five, we can even decrease this to 50 and we run this. We'll have a whole different window with a different board and a much harder selection. <laughs> this was this was really tough. I think it was that one. Nice. So let's see. Was it that one? Yeah, no, it wasn't. OK, cool. But you get the gist of it. You can go ahead and go crazy with this. There are no error checks. I'm going to leave it at 554. Five, there is no way to check if the active tiles will be more than the board size. So you, you have to implement that yourself. I'm sorry, I forgot to do that. But for now, we'll just leave it at this. Go ahead and add stuff to this if you want. It's a cool little thing. You can play this. You can you can work on your memory with this. This is really nice. So hopefully you enjoyed this game. Drop a like, subscribe. It really, really helps out. Like, I mean, honestly, that's the top reason I'll come back. And, and keep making these videos. You know, if, if I see people watching these and appreciating these videos, of course, I want to make more. So that really helps out. Even if you just watch a bit of it, if you just drop a like, subscribe, or just, just drop a comment saying that whatever I could do better, just any kind of criticism, anything is really appreciated because it shows involvement and it helps me out and, and gives me motivation. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys do great. Just let me know what you think of these videos and I'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye bye.